Today is yoga for stress, so a nice gentle class. Trying to, we stay on our mat, we don't get up on our feet. It's a nice, slow, gentle class. We're gonna think about contentment today. Contentment in the teachings, the ancient teachings of yoga. We're just gonna try and find ways to be in the moment and help us guide us through the learning of this concept. So we're gonna start on our backs. So come down onto your back, land on your back. And if you have props for this class, they're gonna be super helpful. You wanna be comfortable in this class. So maybe you have a bolster, maybe you have a blanket. Grab those things. You may wanna make use of the blocks. We'll, we'll play through this class. So use the props that you have. Come on down to your back and start to ground. Start to land on your back. Start to land in the present moment. So this concept of grounding and becoming here in the now. Find your breath. Start to imagine your body landing on the mat, grounding down, letting gravity draw you onto the mat. And as we start to do our grounding practice, our landing in the here and now, think about searching through the body, looking through the body, trying to have an experience. So your experience is without label. So you're trying to find feeling. So if you find some muscle tightness in the foot, can you feel the muscle tightness in your foot rather than labeling it as a pattern or a feeling, giving it a label, oh, that's from this accident or this memory? Can you just feel the tightness? Can you have an experience of what is present? And take your retention around your body, looking for that, oh, my shoulders are pulled up, my shoulders feel tight. Rather than thinking these thoughts, thinking these labels, can you just have the experience of what does it feel like in my shoulders? Can I have that mind-body experience of this is this tension here? What is it? How does it feel? Which muscles in particular? You know, looking around, starting to have your experience, looking around. And then notice which, which emotions are present. And start to think about the concept of emotions being emotions a neutral concept, a filter for our environment. And rather than labeling them as negative and positive, and this idea of contentment being only living in these positive emotions, positive realm of life, or this seeking, <clears throat> seeking of, if I just do this, then I will be happy. If I just get rid of these negative feelings, then I will be happy. If I just get rid of these negative thoughts, then I will be happy. Can you land in now? And whatever is present. So contentment does not mean avoiding or transcending negative emotions. It means learning to accept their presence and being content with what is. So it's a huge concept and a concept that we do not necessarily achieve for every moment of every time, but we can build little moments in time where we're just like, oh, we're just here. This is now. And when my thoughts pull me away to the to-do list or to something else tomorrow or yesterday, I can see my thoughts doing that and I can just gently return to, okay, this is right now. And we just build on these moments, build, build, build. So start, as you start to land in the moment, notice any changes in some of these physical patterns that you've noticed. Notice perhaps any changes in your breath. And then we'll start to do some physical practices just to move through the body. So I'm going to invite you throughout this practice, as we focus in on certain body parts, to really feel 
have a feeling, have a physical feeling. And when your mind pulls you off your mat, maybe your eyes need to find the body parts. You start to draw yourself back into that present moment connection. So start to take a little side sway of the knees and the hips. Bring your feet down, knees up if they're not already there. And just notice what is present in the low back. So notice if there's any tightness, any gripping. Notice maybe some gripping across the front of the hips. <clears throat> We're gonna take the feet up to the ceiling. We're gonna spread our toes and start to notice our feet. So if you have a tight low back, any cramping when you try to take your feet up long and straight, just bring a bend into your legs. Take your legs a little softer, feel your feet, spread your toes. And then with toes and feet active, take slow circles with the feet. What can you feel in the feet? And if you notice popping in the feet, any creaking and groaning, can you just feel that? Rather than, oh, giving it a label, this is bad, this is good, oh, look, there it goes again. Can you just feel the feet? Noticing the tendency of that inner critic Noticing the ten reverse your circles, noticing the tendency of you to travel down memory lane when you notice something present. And then we're going to take a soft pedaling of the legs. So we're going to straighten one leg, bend the other, and just start to feel the muscles of the legs nice and slow. Trying to feel what is present in the legs. Try not to have too much swaying in the hips here. And if you are moving around too much in the hips, just push the hips down with the stomach muscles a little bit. Just starting to feel the legs, maybe taking the feet a little more to, this, to the wall rather than the ceiling, changing the angle. Really feeling every muscle you can find in the legs. Can you feel the thighs? The stabilizer muscles. Can you feel the calf muscles, the lower legs? And then bring your feet down, knees up. Take a little sway just to make sure everything is nice and soft again. And we're gonna think about the shoulders. So land the shoulders nice and strong on the ground, lower body nice and soft. Really trying to press the shoulder blades into the ground. So what happens when you do that? What can you feel in other places of the body? Do you notice some tension up in the neck? Maybe you notice some firing of some muscles in the lower back. Maybe as you press the shoulders down, you feel the muscles across the front of the shoulders, kind of gripping and tired. Notice, notice, notice. Rather than labeling, feeling. I label as I teach just to give you ideas of where to send your attention, but try to have an internal experience of feeling. And then send the arms out, palms up, long from the shoulders, so really long while still pressing the shoulder blades down. We're gonna damp, bring the arms into center, and then as we move, we are going to move and breathe. So inhale, open arms up. Exhale, draw them back together. So as you're doing this, trying to keep just a little press of the shoulder blades down into the ground. Inhale, open, exhale, press. Looking for other places in the body that might be getting to fire up. I'm trying to keep this just in the shoulders and the arms. Inhale, open the chest, not the lower back, soften the lower back, soften the face, move with the breath, notice what is present. Land with the arms open, palms up on the ground, see if your shoulders, now we're loosening the muscles, and just see if your shoulders landed a little more into the ground. Notice what is present there. And then we're gonna think about the muscles of the neck. 
So thinking about your neck, maybe even taking your fingers here because we often do things with our spine. We have no in connection to whatsoever. So we have no idea we're doing it. So maybe taking your fingers and just feeling the shape of your neck. Have you pushed your chin down and tried to flatten that curve in your neck? Notice what is here. So feel, see what is here. See if maybe you lift your chin a little more to the ceiling if more of a natural curve of your neck returns. And then holding your head here, chin to the ceiling, nice curve. Press the back of your head down into the ground and see if you can feel sensation right there where you're pressing your head into the ground. Bringing all of your physical awareness to that point. And then check in. So check in on the lower back muscles, check in across the shoulders and chest, check in any muscles around the jaw and neck. So notice what else becomes present when we just fire up the neck muscles just a little and press down into the ground. And then let that pressing of the head soften. Press the shoulder blades down first. So press the shoulders down and then press the head down. Try to press both at the same time, just a little bit. When we work with muscles of the neck, we really want to look for that number five. Number one is no effort at all. Number 10 is too much. We want to be right in the middle, just finding the muscles, finding sensation in the muscles. And then let everything go, notice. And with a little press in the back of our head, we're gonna slowly move our head. So try to keep that press. Take your chin slowly over towards the right shoulder, as slow as you can. Notice what is present, still trying to keep a little press. So you can may feel more sensation on the right side of the neck, fine muscles. Slowly bring your head back through neutral and then back over to the left shoulder, chin towards the left shoulder. And then back to neutral. I'm going to think about upper motion in the upper back. So we're going to open up, arms wide, palms up. We're gonna be really soft in the knees and hips. We're gonna reach left hand over and across right hand, letting the head move wherever it wants to move. Back open and then reach right arm across left. So we want this motion to come from between the shoulder blades and across the shoulders. We want the head and neck to remain soft. We want the lower back to remain soft. We're just gonna feel what is present and the upper back and shoulders. Notice left and right side differences. Notice which muscles move you and which muscles feel sensation. Notice if your lower back, so a lot of times we wanna make this movement happen from the bigger muscle groups. You might be squeezing the glutes, you might be pressing into the feet, you might be squeezing the low back, so notice. So we inhale, our arms open, move with our breath. Exhale, bring an arm across, moving through the mid upper back. Notice as we take these slow practices, bring you back to neutral and take a little slow side shuffle. Notice as we take these slow sh practices, these gentle, slow, intentional movements, how difficult it is for your mind to stay in physical sensation. So notice when it goes off to the to-do list or off to a worry or a familiar thought pattern and just gently bring it back. How can I feel? How can I have a physical sensation in this body at this moment? So bring yourself back to neutral. We're gonna take our arms to the ceiling and then we're gonna pull our shoulders up. So pull our shoulders up, check for tension in the neck. Try to keep this all in the shoulders. Pull the shoulders up, 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 push the arms away, 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 and then pull them down slow, slow, slow. Bring your shoulders back down to the ground. Pull them up and then down. 
a couple of times, just feeling this motion in your arms and shoulders. And then bring your arms up to a V-shape. So nice and long, long arms, V-shape. Watch for tension in the neck, soften the neck. And we're gonna slowly bend our elbows and pull our arms down towards our hips. So bringing our elbows down towards our hips. Slow, slow, slow. Little press of your arms into the ground. See what you can feel. And then reach your arms up nice and long. Pull the elbows down slowly as you can. Notice any gripping anywhere else. Check in on the glutes, the low back. And then bring your knees in towards the chest. Give yourself a little hug and you can rock it or hold it, curl it in. Slowly roll over to a side and make your way to a tabletop position. So we're gonna move and breathe in tabletop position. So start to feel your hands on the, ta on the ground, on the mat. Feel your knees and your feet on the mat. Feel your base, so move your hands around. Notice what is present, have a physical sensation. And then we're gonna breathe in as we come to tabletop. Exhale, send your hips backwards towards a child's pose shape. Not thinking about the shape, but about having an experience. So what happens as we move through our shoulders, what happens as we move with our breath, inhaling forward, inhaling back. And when I ask questions like, what happens? Do you have the desire to answer it with labels? Or can you start to just really feel? So maybe your movement, once you start to have your own experience and your own sensation, maybe you need a little swaying a little more flow, a little change of the weight on the wrists, a little change of the way the hips go back. Maybe you're gonna move from the tailbone and take little cat cows to the spine. Starting to have your own physical experience with what is present in your own body in this, this moment in time. And then bring it up to a tabletop. If you have sensitive knees, we're gonna be here for a little second. So maybe place something in underneath your knees. We're gonna feel our hands. So rather than having your hands in somebody else's idea of alignment, and shoulders and arms, place your hands and arms so they're most comfortable for your own shoulder and hand and wrist positions. Oftentimes, this means a lot further forward, giving your wrists more space. Start to look at your hands. So, we're gonna pull our fingertips as far apart as they can. Spread your fingers wide, wide, wide. Pull them and then press them down into the ground. So have an experience here. And then leaving the fingertips down, pull the knuckles back. So you're gonna make a little claw shape on the ground, spider fingers. So pull the knuckles back, see what happens in the fingers. Notice what's present in the fingers. And then straighten up the fingers again and squish them all together. So nice and tight, squish them together. Feel what is present in the hands. And then notice which one was most comfortable for you, which version was most comfortable or where you felt strong. And then take a little weight. So move your upper body onto the hands a little and then just experience a little weight change through the arms and hands. Maybe changing the way you're gripping. So maybe your hands are wide, your fingers are together. Move and change and have an experience in the hands and wrists.
and then come on up to the fingertips. So bring your hips back a little more just to bring yourself onto your fingertips. So two things you can do here. You can pull back from the fingertips and lengthen, keeping your fingertips where they are and as if you're trying to pull your hands back towards your knees. Or you can start to strengthen and come forward and bring some weight onto the fingertips. So imagine rather than <laughs> sinking down, so really bring your weight all into the joints. Pull up from the ground, so find as many muscles as you can and pull up from the ground and have a little movement experience with the hands, the fingers, and the wrists. And if you're leaning back, you can still move left and right nice and slow. Experience, have sensation in the hands and wrists. And then bring the hands back down to a neutral position, turn the fingertips of the left hand towards the left knee and just peel up the wrist and lower, peel it up and lower, just experiencing the other side of your wrist. And then the other side, turn the right fingertips towards the knee and peel up the wrist and lower. What muscles pull the hand and move the wrist? What can you feel here? And then back to a neutral tabletop. We're going to take long, slow circles with the arms. So taking the left arm up and around in a nice slow circle, return it, and then on to the other side. So one breath for each arm, nice and slow. See how slow and gentle and kindly you can place your hand back down and adjust the weight, moving with your own muscle patterns. Notice anything else, any other sensations that come up as you make this movement. Maybe you're feeling something in the low back. Maybe your body is sending you signals from other places. And then bring it down slowly to crocodile pose. So lower down all the way to the stomach, one hand on top of the other, forehead down, crocodile pose. So notice what is present here. And notice that the face is down, the breathing muscles are compressed. Notice that this can have all kinds of sensations, not necessarily all positive. So the purpose of yoga and the purpose of the poses is not to have only the experience of positive poses, not to have only a positive experience, but to have an experience of becoming present and noticing. So notice what happens when we come to this position. Sometimes the hardest poses are the ones where we are still, the ones where we are asked to settle and surrender. And then squeeze the muscles of the legs and feet. So squeeze the muscles of the legs and feet. Maybe feeling like you're pressing the tops of the feet down into the ground. Start to see if you can fire up the glutes. Notice what happens in the rest of the body. Maybe the low back. Maybe your tensing around the shoulders. Try to keep this just in the lower body. Have an experience of the legs tight, 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 tight. And then take a deep breath in and with the exhale, release as much tension as you possibly can. Soften into the ground. Bring the heels up to the ceiling, knees bent, and take a little side sway of the legs. Slow, side sway of the legs. Notice what is present. And then we're gonna slowly pull the heels towards the glutes. So we're gonna lengthen the legs, toes come towards the ground, and then slowly, one at a time, pull a heel to the glute, and then switch, heel to the glute, as slow as you can, and you're trying to find the backs of your legs. So the more that you resist the movement, up and down, so pull towards the glute, slowly lower towards the ground. 
the more of an experience you'll find. You're trying to locate the muscles of the backs of the legs and notice what is happening in the hips. Notice if there's a swaying of the hips as you move. Try to keep this just in the back of the legs. And then bring both heels back up to the ceiling, knees bend. And we're gonna lift one heel, lifting one leg up towards the ceiling and then down. So the knee is gonna pop up and then down. It's not a big movement. You're gonna push about an inch up towards the ceiling. Things to notice. Notice if one side is harder than the other. Notice if you try to pop a hip open to get a little more movement. Notice if you're trying to cheat the movement by coming side to side. And just try to have a little press of the heel. So you're pressing through the back of the leg, lifting. Press through the back of the leg, lifting. And then lower both feet. Take a really big shuffle. So wiggle the muscles of the legs and lower back as much as you can. Soften, soften, soften. Notice what is present. Take a deep breath in and with the exhale, sigh it out of the mouth. See if you can soften out some things that are ready to be released. Really soften into the ground. Notice what is present. And we'll work the muscles of the back. So starting small, starting where you're at. We're going to bring our hands down to support us just for balance. We're going to fire up all the muscles of the back. Inhale as you lift the shoulders. Exhale as you lower. So things to watch for. Pulling too much tension in the neck and pulling the head back and trying to get a huge arch. Think about lengthening the spine. So thinking about getting longer from the tailbone to the crown of the head and firing up all of the muscles at the back line as much as possible and evenly as possible. So we're gonna fire up the glutes, the low back, the mid back, all evenly rather than one muscle group more than the other. Move with your breath. And then place the forearms down. Engage the forearms a little. So pressing the hands and forearms down into the ground and then feeling like you're pulling them apart. Lengthen the spine. So rather than arching, pull the sternum like you're pulling it towards your fingertips. Watch for yanking on the head. Hold here, Sphinx pose. Breathe. Notice what is present. So see if you can fire up the shoulders and the forearms a little more. And then slowly take your hands wide. This time we're gonna move with freedom. So we're gonna try and have a movement pattern without too much muscle gripping. We're gonna lift, inhale center, exhale, bring one shoulder towards the ground, turn and look at the opposite foot. Inhale center, exhale, bring the other side. So turning, moving, feeling your shoulders, feeling your upper back, feeling your breath. Notice any gripping in the low back. Notice any gripping in the neck. Try to let the head flow naturally. And then bring it back to crocodile. Shuffle, wriggle, let everything soften. Maybe even taking that big deep inhale in and a sigh out of the mouth to land on the mat.
We're gonna work with lower body movement. So we're gonna bring the right heel up towards the sky. And we're gonna slowly bring it back over the left leg, down and over. So a little bit of twisting movement. Take it slow, take it gentle. Notice what is present. Notice if you have some goal of this pose or position. Notice if you have some other impression of what this shape should look like and you're trying to go somewhere rather than just trying to lift the knee and bring the leg over the left. Having an experience of what might be present in the low back and hips. Lower the right leg. Switch to the other side. Left heel comes to the ceiling. Lift up the knee and take the heel past the right leg. Nice and slow. Noticing what is present. Noticing if one side's different than the other. bring it back to neutral and slowly make your way back to a child's pose. Release into whatever version of child's pose feels right for you. So you can leave the hips high, you can tuck the toes, you can leave your hands and arms active, you can sink down and surrender into the mat. Find a position that works for you. And then return to tabletop. So back to our neutral tabletop position. We're gonna work a little bit with balance. So we're gonna take our right leg even with our hip. Things to watch for. Buckling in the back, so dropping into this low back and hanging out in the joints. Try to be a little active and strong in the arms, shoulders, and stomach. Hold the leg long. Notice how long you can hold it before you start to feel tired. Watching for dropping into the right shoulder. So nice and strong in the right shoulder. Pulling up out of the ground, take the left arm long and hold in balance. Notice the wobbles. Notice your breath. Notice your muscles. Breathe. Slowly lower down and then take the left leg up. So left leg even with the hip, nice and strong, pulling up out of the ground with the muscles of the arms and shoulders, nice and strong with the leg. And then take the right arm long, breathe and balance. Slowly lower. An option to repeat, or if you've been working on yoga for a long time and you're working on balance for a long time and you feel really steady, you can try for a challenge. So it helps to tuck the toes. This time we're gonna lift the left leg and hold and either move to the opposite arm or if you're trying for the challenge, we are going to try and lift the same arm. So left leg, left arm. Pull up out of the ground, see if you can hold and balance. Breathe. Notice how different it is to do it on this side, same side. Similar pose, different muscles, different focus. Slowly lower and switch. So right leg up and either left arm up, or if you'd like the challenge, you're gonna try and pull up out of the ground with all of your muscles, stomach strong, and then see if you can lift the right, oh, right hand. Very difficult to do while talking. So lift, breathe, balance. Yikes. And then lower down, then we're gonna take some circles with the hips. So think about freeing movement, slow, soft circles. Good. 
Take your circles in the opposite direction. Bring it back to a neutral tabletop. Take your right leg long, lower the toes, and press through the heel. So either take the static if that feels fabulous or little pulses on and off. See if you can start to think about the movement rather than pressing through the heel. Think about it coming from the calf muscle. So coming from the lower leg, pull from the lower leg, pull the heel back towards the glute with the muscles of the lower leg. So you have, you can get a little bit of a change in the stretch. So rather than thinking about pushing right into the heel and all of the muscles and ligaments around the heel, think about lengthening the leg, the whole leg. And then lift the leg, bend the knee, and take a really slow circle, really slow circle with the knee, thinking about all of the ways that the leg can move within the hip. And then reverse the circle. And then on to the other side. So take a quick shift through neutral. Left leg long, lower the toes, press through the back of the leg. Static, which is a hold, or little pulses on and off, whichever feels better for you. And then lift the leg, bend the knee, slow circles. So then give out movement within the hip. Not just rolling the leg around and flopping it through the joint, but feeling every angle your leg can move in and then back in the other direction. <clears throat> Lower the left knee. We're gonna lift up the right leg, take it over the left. So lower the toes, take it over the left, press through the leg a little, and then lengthen. So lengthen right side body. You can lift the right arm and lengthen. Maybe take it past the left. Think about opening up right side body. Try to take the tension out of the head. You can lower down, find your head on your arm. Take the tension out of the head and open up, just thinking about long as you can be on the right side. Slowly adjust back through neutral. Take the left leg long past the right. Lengthen. Press through the leg, and then slowly extend the left hand, lengthen the left side body, lower the head, and feel the left rib cage breathe. Slowly back to neutral and come to a seated position. So if you need a chair, come to a chair. I'm gonna be here for just a little bit, not too long. I'm gonna work through the shoulders. Sorry, I forgot my hair tie. My hair is on my face. Okay, so getting to a neutral position. Find your breath. See if you can find this even hips. So can you feel if you have more weight on one hip or the other? Can you feel have an experience in your hips see what you feel here notice notice if you're over flattening your back or pulling your chin back or pinching your shoulders together so notice these things try to soften the hands soften the shoulders just going to work through the muscles of the shoulders a little more so we're gonna pinch the shoulder blades together. So squeeze the shoulder blades together as tight as you can. So nice and strong, have an experience between the shoulder blades. And then we're gonna pull one shoulder up and one shoulder down. So going up and down, 
with that muscle action. So you're still squeezing together, but you're taking a little up and down movement. So you're trying to have as much experience between the shoulder blades as possible and trying to keep those low back muscles out of the game. So squeezing between the shoulder blades, lifting and lowering, nice and slow. And then squeeze together as much as you can. Take a deep breath in, and then with the exhale, loosen. See what you notice. Soften, loosen. And then we're gonna squeeze the shoulders up towards the ears. Squeeze, 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 and suddenly drop. Squeeze, 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 and suddenly drop. Squeeze, and suddenly drop. Notice what is present. Now, for this next one, many of you are not going to have the anatomical issue I have. I have slightly shorter arms, so you may not need the blocks. If you're sitting on a chair, you may be able to just push your hands onto the chair. We just want to lift our hips up. So lifting our hips up about an inch, less than an inch. We just want to lift them hold, drop, lift, hold, and then drop suddenly. I'm gonna have that experience of the somatic movement that happens when we suddenly land. So notice what comes up. Notice if you start to feel really silly. Notice if you feel giggly. Notice any emotions that happen. It's a somatic movement. So it's designed to shake things up, shake the system up a little. Notice what happens. See if you can be silly about it. See if you can play with it. And then come to a neutral seated position. Notice what is present. So notice if you feel a little silly. Notice if some other emotion is present. Close your eyes and bring your focus inside. So inside your skull. Imagine that your vision could look back on the inside of your skull and the center of your forehead. Soften the muscles of the eyes and maybe you'll see a little light dancing on the inside of the forehead. Maybe you see some colors. Notice. And then making a decision about where you would like to be for your resting pose. So maybe you wanna have your legs up on a chair, up on a wall. If you put your legs up on a wall, so having your legs straight up in the air, legs on a wall, it is a wonderful pose for so many reasons. It brings all the blood from your feet back down to your heart. Wonderful thing to do. However, things to look for. If you cannot rest in this pose without there being tension in the low back or tension in the back of the legs, then it's no longer a resting pose. It's a stretch. So if you are going to this pose, make sure your feet are in a position where your legs and your back, all your muscles can be as comfortable and soft as possible. Maybe you wanna have feet together, knees apart, prop up your knees so that the inner thighs feel like they can take a break. Find your resting pose. And I'm gonna talk you through that concept of contentment. So we were trying to have a physical experience throughout class. We were trying to notice what was present. And hopefully you were trying to practice noticing without labels. So we go through our life with so much automatic movement. So as you're starting to rest in, land into your position, trying to soften as many muscles as possible, common thing we ask you to do at the end of a yoga practice is do a body scan. Well, what does that mean if we have very little muscular presence? So much of our movement throughout our day-to-day -day existence 
is done without thought and muscular presence. We reach for our groceries. We turn to look when we're backing up the car. We, all these movements, we don't think about, oh, I'm going to engage this muscle, this muscle, and then make the turn. That doesn't happen. When we try to think, now, with a lot of practice, that's not to say that with a lot of practice, there are many athletes that can isolate one muscle. I, my daughter recently showed me an athlete who could rotate the muscles of his chest one by one. It was crazy. It was very intense to be able to see those one by one muscles move. But that's practice. That's uh, a long, long practice of that mind-body connection and control. We don't normally, in a normal state, have that. So when you're doing a body scan, can you locate as much sensation as possible? So it can be helpful to start in places we know a little more clearly, so our fingertips. Can you feel the skin? Can you feel the tips of the fingers? Can you feel the hands? Can you feel the back of the hand, the palm of the hand? Can you feel the wrist? Can you notice so one thing I often see in classes is people have their hands and they're gripping. They're, it's part of their defense mechanism. And they're either holding and covering with their hands or they're gripping in their hands. And I'm sure that they're not even aware that it's present. So can you notice that? Can you feel if your hands are gripping and don't want to let go? Not that one is better or right or wrong. Just notice. Can you feel it? Can you feel what is present in your hands? Can you maybe bring a little softness, a little more rest to the hands? And if you don't want to, don't. It's a suggestion. All of this is a suggestion, experience. Feel, feel, feel what is present. Notice the shoulders. See if you feel tension or tightness in the shoulders. Notice the muscles of the neck, the muscles of the low back. Can you feel around the knees? Can you see and find any tension or anything that's talking in the knees? Where is the tongue in the mouth? Can you feel your gums in your mouth? Can you feel your teeth in your mouth? Can you feel the roof of your mouth? Can you feel your breath as it comes in and out through your nose? Can you isolate and feel the left side and only the left side and then only the right side? And then can you feel both sides and find the place where your breath meets? So it goes in the left nostril, in the right nostril, and there's a point where the breath meets and becomes one rather than left and right sides. Can you find sensation here? So as you're starting to sink into the mat, we read a little more about contentment. Also thought of as non-grasping and non-seeking. So again, I'm going to repeat, contentment does not mean avoiding or transcending negative emotions. Contentment can mean to take to sorry to t to find calm. So find a calm center without seeking anything to be different. So take refuge in a place that is calm and in the middle and neutral. Without seeking anything to be different. So discontentment is the illusion that there can be something else in the moment. 
when in fact the moment is complete. So this moment right here right now is complete. It will not be more or different or better or worse. It is a moment. You are here in this moment. Things and emotions are neutral. It is only our personal labeling that we place on things that make them appealing or repulsive to us. There is a proverb that the noise does not disturb you, you disturb the noise. The reality is that the noise is just a noise. It is only our attempt to control what is in our environment based on personal preference that we label the noise a disturbance and then react accordingly. And it is just so with emotions. It is us that disrupt the flow of life, not the noise, not the emotion. Seeking and avoiding are expensive uses of our energy, a circular pattern to which there is no end. So we find an emotion, we label it, and rather than having an experience of feeling it and noticing what it does to our body, what it does to our mind, just feeling, having an experience, we label it, bottle it, place it, and we kind of sever it. We okay, create these little severances in ourselves. So whenever we label an emotion negative, then there has to be the opposite, the negative and the positive. And we create this chasm within us of this side is the side that is good and this side is the side that is bad. And this is what I want to be and this is what I don't want to be, rather than just being. So we are all of these things. And there cannot be an experience of pure joy without knowing the opposite. And all of these things can be present all at once. Contentment is not the concept of finding that elusive inner serene peace that perhaps some of the saintly images bring to mind in us. It is that constant practice of trying to get to know what is and be more and more comfortable in what is. So as you're resting, as you're noticing, notice the sounds. See if you can notice sounds in your room, far away, close to you, as sounds. Rather than label it as a bird or a car or a horn or anything, can you just experience it as if it were sound, just a sound? a vibration. And the more that we practice this practice with sounds and things that we can learn to absorb and accept as present, the more that we can start to understand the concept of accepting that our thoughts and our feelings are also just present. There is only the battle, that constant trying to seek only pleasure and avoid pain. The constant battle of seeking, seeking, seeking something to be different than it is. So noticing perhaps as we really start to sink in, the mind becomes a little more restless. Notice perhaps the mind is already planning out what comes next. And the thinking mind just is. 
So contentment does not come from controlling the thinking mind. But again, just accepting that it's there, that it is, that it does what it does. Thinking mind is a tool for our environment just as our hands are tools for the way that we live our lives. And the emotions also are tools for how we live our life. Information for what is going on. They are tied deeply into our survival instincts. So they just are. They're just part of us. Contentment does not come from only feeling the feelings that we delabel as positive. Contentment does not come from only doing and saying the things that we label as positive. In seeking to only get things right and seeking to be something other than we are in this moment we only create greater disturbances within the self that inner critic starts to pop up remind us of our mistakes remind us of when we fail in this outward eternal goal So if you have further time to take in your resting pose, and you can take time practicing, working with the noise because it is often a, a, an easy way for us to start to practice. That practice of being content with what is present and not giving it a label of negative and positive. If you're ready to move into a little bit deeper, you can start to find feelings that are present and see if you can feel how they feel in the body rather than label what they are. So each feeling has a physical presence in our body. Sometimes we feel it in our chest, in our stomach. There are many places where we feel emotions. There are in fact infrared scans that they do on the body for people that have emotions and there are familiar patterns of emotions in the body. So see if you can just start to notice those sensations. And you can even practice bringing to mind the sensation of that emotion and then feeling that in the body. So take your time practicing being content with what is. Or if you really need to finish up at 60 minutes, I'm going to slowly bring yourself into a fetal position and curl up in a ball and connect with this familiar pattern. So see if your mind is already pulling you off the mat. Try and just connect with being curled up in a protective ball, reminding us of a time in the womb when all of our needs were met. We had not judged ourselves as negative or positive. We were simply a spark of life. And that inner spark of life, our spirit, our soul, it exists within us, unchanged by our experiences, our judgments. Just waiting for us to connect within and remember who we are. And then slowly bring yourself up to a seated position. Bring your hands to prayer at heart space and 
feel as much sensation as you possibly can in your fingertips touching and your hands touching your heart center. So this is heart center, the physical center of the chest, thought to be the spiritual center. There's a big nerve bundle here. It's kind of the center of the body. Notice that we draw attention to not the cognitive mind, but the place we more commonly think of as the spirit center, our intuition, our spiritual guide, our inner wisdom. Place all of your awareness here as if remembering it present and honoring it present. And then in honoring your own inner wisdom, send out that honor to someone else. Maybe it's someone in particular or maybe it's just outward in general, thinking of a group or sending it out into people that may need it. And perhaps repeating the words, the light within me sees and honors the light within you. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day.